The first thing I want to say is that this is an extension video, okay? So we're doing this for interest sake. Uh, we're going to look at the integral of cosec and sec. Um, now we've looked at the integrals of tan and cot. Um, they integrated quite nicely using the f prime of f rule. Um, and I've also written up here the derivatives of tan, cosec, sec, and cot. All of those derivatives we've looked at already. Okay? Um, your formula booklets uh, may well include these results. I think they all do, uh, but you might want to just double check that. Um, I don't, I don't want to say something that's wrong. Um, AQA definitely does, okay? So, um, but, so you might just want to check that your formula booklets have those results. But anyway, these are results that we've already shown, okay? So I could use those results. Um, now, integrating these, um, the reason why I've put it as an extension is because they use a trick. And I can already tell um, that you probably won't like this, okay? So um, you might be reserving judgment, but I can, uh, I, I can tell when uh, people don't quite like some methods of doing things. So here we go. We're going to integrate cosec dx. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to multiply the cosec by 1, okay? Um, the only thing is that I am, in doing so, going to choose what format uh, the 1 takes, okay? So I'm going to multiply this uh, cosec x over 1, top and bottom, by cosec plus cot. That's that. Over that. So let's pop brackets around it, like that. Now you might be wondering, well, firstly, where's that come from? Um, well, the reason why I've multiplied it top and bottom by that is because it works. Um, so sometimes you will find that there are integrals where you're just going, well, where did that original thought come from? Where was that logical leap made? Um, and a lot of it is going to be from having played around and just seen what might work, OK? So we're going to multiply this top and bottom by cosec x plus cot x. What happens when you do that is you're going to get cosec times cosec, so cosec squared x, and you're going to get cosec times cot over cosec plus cot. Now, this is where this rule comes in. So when you look at the denominator, you've got cosec plus cot. Cosec differentiates to minus cosec cot, and cot differentiates to minus cosec squared. We've got the cosec squared. We've got the cosec cot. It's just we've actually got positives in the top, in the numerator. So actually, if I was to write this as the negative of, I could multiply top and bottom by minus 1, like that. So I've, I've got the minus on the outside, and now I've got the minuses in the numerator. So they, they cancel one another out. But the denominator now perfectly differentiates to the numerator. So actually, we have the negative log modulus of cosec plus cot. plus some constant c. So cosec integrates to minus the natural log of the modulus of cosec plus cot plus c. Now, that result is coming from the fact of me choosing to multiply top and bottom by that function, okay, that expression. It looks like it's coming out of nowhere. And the reason why um, we do that is because as I said, it works. So we're actually going to make a very similar trick uh, for sec x. 
So I'm going to multiply by 1 again, okay? This time, I'm going to multiply top and bottom by sec x plus tan x. So, in the numerator, we've got sec squared x plus sec x tan x. In the denominator, we've got the sec x plus tan x. Okay. Now, sec differentiates to sec x tan x, which is there. And tan differentiates to sec squared, which is there. So, the denominator perfectly differentiates to the numerator. And so, this is the natural log of the modulus of sec x plus tan x plus c. And that's how you integrate cosec and sec 